Hey, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out the video. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about removing support material on your 3D prints. So for the example here, I've got a model that I printed out for work. It's a cute little detached garage and uh, as you can imagine with house prints, you're going to have a lot of support material that you have to remove. And you'll need support material anywhere you have overhangs with the soffits. Um, basically anywhere that you have your model extended past and there isn't any any model below so anytime and also anytime you've got larger than 45 degree angle um, so I'll be talking about my process of removing all of this support material here and um, kind of going through the tools that I use as well so I'll be switching over to my GoPro I'll be going through the process and cleaning up this model so let's check it out alright so we're all set up here on the GoPro um, basically, I'll be walking you through removing the support materials and the tools that I like to use as well. And by no means is my setup perfect, but this is what I like to use and what I've kind of learned over the years. Um, so first things first, I normally use, it's actually a uh, little screwdriver set that you would normally find for like eyeglasses repair kits. And I'll use the flathead screws, screwdrivers here. And it's kind of a way that I use it as a chisel to try and nick out the little pieces. Um, I don't use the Phillips head part or Phillips head screwdrivers, obviously, but I'll use the uh, various sizes here of the flat heads and I'll try and use them to flatten out or kind of remove any pieces. Other tools that I use are needle nose pliers. They are super helpful. I've got a couple different sizes that I'll use depending on how big the support material is that I have to remove or uh, if I have to get into smaller places, but huge thing to have are needle nose pliers. Along with the pliers, I'll use these flush cutters. They are perfect. They're like, they're so cheap on Amazon or wherever your local hobby store you could find them. Um, they're basically like two little exacto knives that you like go up close to the model and then you can snip flush um, any extra um, parts that are sticking out or little support material you can just remove all of that that way I use this more for the finer material once I get the bulk stuff out with the needle nose pliers um, and I guess while we're talking about it just more of my setup I've got this little sanding tool here um, this little sanding block it's more of just like for fine tuning I'll use it mainly for if I'm getting ready to spray paint or airbrush later I'll like sand everything down just to get more fine um, and then of course, super glue just in case because as you're working on house models, um, this doesn't have it, but a lot of the models that I make have little columns that like to break when I'm removing all the support material, but super glue comes in super handy. So, so yeah, let's get into it. I'll just start removing the support material and kind of walking through my process. Okay, so I'm actually gonna start with the needle nose pliers and just taking away the big chunks that I can. Um, it's kind of what I like to use to get the bulk of it out of the way. Um, and it comes off pretty easily. It's I can go into another video, kind of my setup for how I'll uh, fine tune the settings and whatever slicer you're using. But I like to use the, uh, the support material settings at a higher um, higher speed rate and a lower filament percentage just so that they are easier to break away and remove like right here it's super easy to just remove these uh, this extra material um, so even just removing those little bits right there you know you can start to see the uh, start to see the doors and uh, for the garage here now for the dormers there is a lot of stringing in, in between here so it's pretty easy to grab one thing I will say though is you gotta have a lot of patience when you're moving support material. You don't want to be too rough on it too because you can easily break away some of the smaller pieces. Um, this model is pretty simple. It doesn't have too many of the big pieces here. But um, you just want to be careful while you're doing it. Um, you know I forgot to mention before actually. There's different types of support material and it's probably easier to explain in the software. but you can use a uh, tree supports or what I'm what I used on this model are ribbon supports um, and they're kind of just exactly like they sound it's like a ribbon that goes in a very thin line of material 
versus the tree supports are more like uh, structured like a tree like it's they come up like sprues and you have to remove them that way but I just chose the ribbon because it was one of the default options and it was just easier so this would be a good example to switch over to a screwdriver here see if I can get underneath use it as that chisel it is a bit of a time consuming process but it's all part of the process so I kind of just work my way around the model I my strategy I don't really have one I well I guess I do I kind of get the big stuff first that I know I can easily tear off and then work my way down into the finer material um, kind of just do it that way because you can be a little more aggressive on the big stuff versus um, the smaller stuff you I get a little worried about destroying some of the detail but yeah in the beginning is just uh, getting as much as you can out of the way sometimes it can be pretty stubborn Um, one thing too, as you can see, there's a lot of stringing here. If I can't totally get all of that, or if there's just like some real wispy uh, stringing left on there, I actually have used my uh, heat gun and just hit it with that and it'll smooth out some of these smaller ones. It doesn't work the best for the big ones because you run the risk of uh, melting your model, but for the little ones, it's totally fine. It's And you just have it on a low setting. It's basically like, uh, like a hair dryer. Maintain this pile of supports. So we're making progress here. It's starting to look like a real, real model. Just got to get some of the more stubborn ones. You do want to be careful when you're using uh, any tools like this, just because they can slip and. Give you a little cut, especially with uh, an X-Acto blade or one of the flush cutters. You just gotta be careful while you're using them. So you wanna be careful at uh, all the places where you got the windows. You don't wanna actually accidentally pull out the muttons. Um, Sometimes they have the support material will be inside the window. Sometimes not. Um, it all depends, like in the software, when you set the parameters. I wasn't too careful when I was setting up this one, just because I did the auto supports and tweaked them a little bit afterwards. But um, I was a little bit in a hurry, so I didn't spend too much time. So going around and getting all the excess material out um, and they do actually have water dissolvable filament I just don't have any at the moment and um, it is a bit more finicky to print with uh, the PVA material that's what it's called it's basically uh, dissolvable filament and water and uh, you'd have to use a dual extruder um, and I printed this on my CraftBot XL, which is just a single extruder. So that wasn't an option for me on this model. Um, as I mentioned before, there can be some pretty stubborn areas, and this is one, just one that's in a hard to reach area that seems pretty stuck, stuck to the model. Do my best to try and get this uh, cleaned up.
And you will have some areas on the model where hopefully you'll be able to see this on the camera where there wasn't support material just at this lip here um, on this face. It um, wasn't enough to provide a support material. So there is a little bit of stringing and you can just snip those with your flush cutters. There we go. And then here underneath the sill, similar scenario where there's just that little bit that wasn't enough for any support material. So as I mentioned before, I kind of jump around as I'm as I'm removing support ma support material, just because I like to get the big stuff, and then uh, I don't know, just helps to switch it up as you're going around the model, just constantly rotating. So. The support material can be tricky, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of hard to reach areas, like over here in the dormer. You can barely get there. Um, you know, I forgot to mention before when I was talking about the tools, sometimes I'll use a Dremel. Um, this may be a good area where I could touch it up with the Dremel just because it's that rotating bit and could get a nice smoother finish. You just got to be careful with the Dremel because you don't want to melt the plastic and break through that outer wall. Um, but it can be nice and a useful tool for uh, finishing up your prints. Um, I don't think I'll need it per se for this model just because they are coming off relatively easy. I have had some pretty stubborn models though that I've had to really really take the time to uh, use a Dremel and use some brute force. <laughs> All right, so now we're starting to look really good here. Gotta clean up some of the loose ends. And a lot of the stringing can be uh, resolved in your print settings just by lowering the print speed. I just didn't wanna spend too much time on printing. Um, so I sped up the printer a bit, which would uh, help cut down the time. A lot of these strings you can just pull off by hand. They're not too uh, difficult. Just annoying when it's a little fuzzy like that. What nice crisp models. Alright, so now we're starting to look really good here. Um, probably should mention too, sometimes um, I'm not too concerned about with this model because there's not too much going on, but if this is going to stay a white model. You could touch it up with just some white paint on any burn marks where the uh, extruder was sitting for quite a while. And I can only see like one there, one there, one inside the dormer. Um, but if you're painting it, it's not a big deal, you know, once you hit, the, hit it with that uh, first primer coat. But these aren't too big of blemishes that I'm worried that I'm not uh, concerned about it. And uh, you'll know you're done with uh, cleaning up all the support material. When uh, you get so tired of doing it, they say, okay, this model's done. But uh, <laughs> but in all seriousness, once you're happy with it, it's uh, 
then you know you're done. I'm more of like a perfectionist when it comes to these, so I like to take my time and uh, get it as close as I can with uh, removing all the supports. So now we've got a nice big pile here. And I like to keep a mat down too. I forgot to mention that. That once I get all of this uh, support material removed, I like to just take the mat and uh, scoop everything up. It keeps it nice and tidy. Alright, so I think I'm all done here. It's getting real close. Uh, I think I've just got a little bit left. But, alright, I think I'm all set with this model. And, uh, so thanks for sticking around if you're still here watching the video. Um, let me know down in the comments what, what are you working on? What kind of projects are you working on that require support material? curious to hear about it and uh, if you've got any questions just let me know um, so yeah just give it a like give it a subscribe to the channel and uh, thanks for watching